Good morning, everybody. I thought we'd kick off by just watching a small silent film. It's not in black and white, but it is silent, which is basically just an introduction to my business to give you um, a flavour of what the business is all about. You'll see a lot of people making things, which is something that I'm very, very proud of because there aren't enough people in the country making things anymore, I don't believe. Um, they're a great team of people. Um, very committed to my business. We've survived for almost 10 years. We'll be 10 on the 27th of April. Um, it's been a, a really, really interesting journey and I am incredibly proud of having been on that journey, but I'm most proud of these people here and I hope you will try the products this afternoon because whilst this session is about something really, really important and groundbreaking in the economy, it's also about business, it's about real businesses. Um, so we just, uh, I mean, it, you have to kind of, every time I watch this, I feel really proud because I see the expressions on people's faces. And I think, well, there's 32 people who've got jobs who wouldn't have. And I think what I find staggering about the figures that Rob's just disclosed to us is where would businesses have gone? if that finance hadn't been there. Arguably, lots of businesses wouldn't have set up, lots of businesses would have failed if they hadn't had access to that kind of finance. So I'm, I'm proud to be here to support the work that Dan and his team are doing, because without people like them who are entrepreneurial and innovative, the economy potentially will collapse. Um, I'm, I am staggered by those figures. I'm thinking, well, where would that 939 million have come from, certainly not from the banks, unfortunately. Um, so I'll, I'll carry on um, and sort of tell, first of all, I want to kind of tell the story of the business. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with 10 years worth, don't worry. Um, we, we basically have grown from zero. I bought assets out of a liquidation, set up with no real idea what I was going to do, but I was convinced I was going to do it. So off we went. And I've never had any outside investment. I'm still 100% shareholder. I don't know if I'd go that route if I set up a business again. <coughs> um, however, it, it, it kind of leaves you quite constrained financially. We've always been constrained financially, particularly when you're trying to grow. You're constrained just standing still, but to try and achieve growth is really, really tough. In the very, very early days, I used to drive two and three times a week to our wholesaler to buy ingredients because they wouldn't give us a credit line. I literally went with cash in a bag to buy ingredients, put them in the boot of my car until the point where the guy that the uh, supplier said, I don't think you can do this anymore. My car was going further and further down, closer to the ground. So it, it's tough. Access to finance is tough at every single stage of your business. There's 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 no way of glossing over that fact. Um, but to have people who are acknowledging that and setting up platforms to facilitate people like me to do the things that we want to do is wonderful. I, I am full of admiration for Dan because he's a classic entrepreneur and that he hit a problem with his business, but he didn't see it as a problem. It's just, I can't get any money for my own business. What am I going to do? I'll set up a platform where I can lend money to businesses. How, how absolutely wonderful and inspirational is that? Um, so I, uh, and because also um, Dan was on the Goldman Sachs program, as I was privileged to be as well, and there are a number of other people here who also have been on that wonderful, wonderful journey. If any of you sort of business owners here are considering, you know, thinking, oh, I need a bit of help with what I'm doing, I need to access a network of people, please, please consider the Goldman Sachs programme, particularly with the wonderful deliverers from Leeds University. It's, it's, a, it's a business journey, it's a personal journey. I can't say enough positive about it. And, and what it does is creates an atmosphere of trust. I didn't have any doubt that I could trust Dan when, when I realised that he was, he'd set up the platform, I needed money, Dan's got a platform, let's just get on with it. Um, and we were successful. I remember sitting in a meeting with Dan over at, the, over at the Radisson, talking through my numbers, which they were quite embarrassing, I have 
have to say it was the first year we reported a loss. It was the large amount, largest amount of finance that anybody had tried to get through rebuilding society. And Dan did point these two facts out to me very kindly. Um, and I just said, well, do your job then. There's your challenge. Let's see if you can raise the finance. And quite wonderfully, they did. Um, we, we wanted to buy a piece of equipment. We've got a demand for a product, which is a portion version of our existing cake. Um, unfortunately, the catering industry is now all about portion control. Will one piece of cake be the same size as the next piece of cake? That's what the, the coffee shop wants to be able to deliver. So we realised if we can deliver that consistently, still have a beautiful cake, but it's pre-portioned, ready to serve, that will access a whole new market for us. We tried it out with a really small machine. We spent a couple of grand on a hand operated machine, couldn't keep up with the demand. So we thought, right, let's get an automated version of this. I did all the research, found the machine, it cost about 50,000 pounds. Went to the traditional asset finance lenders, um, couldn't get funding from them because the machine was supplied by a company based in America who didn't have a UK agent. They weren't prepared to finance it until it was in the UK. So I thought, right, well, there's a solution here. Can I see my bank manager? How about if I know I can get finance once the machine's in the UK, will you fund it, not insure it, fund it on its journey from the US to the UK? Any surprises? No. No, we can't do that. You can't provide me £50,000 for a short period of time so I can buy a piece of equipment to fulfil a demand that I have for my product. No. So I wasn't going to give up though and that's when we went to Dan and they did successfully get us that money. We bought the machine. It's working all the time. It's wonderful. And, and the, whole, the whole experience, I can't emphasise enough if there are people sitting here thinking, well, I might have a go at this. I might try and borrow some money there. It's such a positive, positive experience. One, you haven't got the process of having to run numbers through somebody who then takes them off to an underwriter who doesn't have the faintest clue about you or your business. You're dealing directly with the people who are going to lend you the money, which is great. It's also a very, very open platform as a woman in business. I can't prove this, but I intend to prove it. It's more difficult to raise finance. It's more difficult to be seen as credible. There's none of that on the platform. It breaks through all of that. And you also have the opportunity, which Dan pointed out that I needed to do. You put all your information onto the platform. There'll be questions in the process of the bidding. Answer the questions. Have all your numbers ready. Be on top of your numbers. Be able to answer the questions like that, because one, they're asking a question because they want to know the answer. You appear more credible as a person and, and it's easy to do it. I think my, my biggest learning from, from the experience, which has helped me in other processes, is that the more information you give people, the better the situation is and the more options you give yourself. Culturally, as businesses, we're encouraged to keep our information to ourselves. Small companies file abbreviated accounts. So people looking on company's house get the smallest amount of information possible. So what are they going to do? They're potentially not going to look at your business, not offer you the finance. Why don't you give them all the information? I would quite willingly run around the streets of Leeds with all my statutory accounts information because what difference does it make? What difference? It has to be a positive thing. If people see improvement in your margin, if they see your balance sheet improving, why not? So I will this year, as part of the, the experience of being much more comfortable of showing people my financial information, I'm going to file full accounts. I don't have to, but I'd rather people knew how well we'd done. Um, and that learning also extends into people who are potentially coming to the next stage of growth as we are, where we want outside investment in the business. There's only me as a shareholder, there's only me on the board. That's quite a lonely place sometimes. And I am now reaching out for investment. We've had lots of conversations and that's a whole other catalogue. Um, but it, it gets you into that space by doing this and putting your information on the platform. 
it's easy. It's easy. Once you've done that, it's easy. You can tell people everything that they really want to know. What you also get is once you've got lenders who are engaged with your business, you've also got people who then become advocates of your business. It's not a blank funding transaction. People have seen your business. They then want to watch your business grow. Potentially, you can go back again if we need if you need more finance. We we were actually lucky in having a tangible product, and we could actually sell send samples of the products to encourage people to lend. Um, the other wonderful thing that happened to me as part of the process was one of the people who I I was on the Goldman Sachs program with another alumni. He actually put money into the platform, and on an emotional level. That made me feel absolutely wonderful because I thought there's some actual commitment from somebody else who believes in me and believes in my business to the extent that he's prepared to put his money up there on the platform. Also, one of our employees put some money onto the platform. Again, how wonderful is that? How engaged is he as a person in, in the business? And I'm not talking about a huge amount of money. It doesn't matter though, does it? It's that engagement. And, and the other significant thing is that it opens up everybody's minds, which the traditional institution seems to have forgotten about. There's a direct correlation between risk and reward. That's what we're all doing as business owners. We're taking a risk with a view to getting a reward at the end of it. And, and the rewards in all sorts of different formats. And I think the fact that there are people who will lend and they'll get a better rate of interest than they would get anywhere else are acknowledging that. Yeah, I put my money in there and I'll get something back for it. What's wrong with that? I think it's wonderful. And I think the fact that there's a platform there that puts those two sets of people, one people who can't get money from anywhere else, along with people who've got money and can't earn enough on it, and you bring the two together, everybody's happy from, from where I'm looking at it, I think. If there are people here who are considering uh, borrowing money on the platform, I'd be more than happy, more than happy to sort of share more detail of the experience. I've kind of got too many things to try and get them out in an orderly, orderly way right now. I will be around for most of the day. I'll be on the panel this afternoon. So please do collimate, please do eat the cakes because they are wonderful. Um, thank you all for your time. I hope uh, that's been helpful.